Hello and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. This is Pastor Brian Wardlaw. I'm pleased that you could join me tonight. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to uh, join together as we look at God's Word, as we fellowship together with Him, and as we uh, draw strength and encouragement. You know, there's no greater strength, there's no greater encouragement that we can find than going to God's Word. And uh, what a place to be. So as we get, we open it up and as we begin tonight, let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to be together. For our friends that have stopped by to uh, study your word together with us tonight. We pray, Father, that you would encourage that person that is down, that person that's discouraged, maybe even just downright depressed. We pray that you would lift them, bless them, encourage them in their spirit and in their soul. And Father, may we, uh, may we draw closer to you in this time together tonight. We ask it in your name. Amen. Uh, this evening I want to go to the book of Job. Job chapter number 19. Job 19. And I want to read a couple of verses there. Verses 23, 24, and 25. Job is a fellow that had, uh, as we might say, he had uh, life figured out. He had uh, possessions that uh, were very numerous. In fact, he was a very wealthy man. He had a, a lot of livestock. He had a wonderful family. He had, uh, it just appeared as though Job had everything going his way, and all of a sudden, things took a turn for the worse, and Job was in a situation that he loses all of his possessions, all of his wealth. He loses his children are all killed. Um, it's a very discouraging, depressing time. And, and then on top of that, his wife, who is still hanging around, his wife tells him, said, Job, why don't you curse God and die? I can't believe you're still trusting him. Why don't you curse God and just die? Job was even struck physically until he had boils all over his body. And he, the, 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 his book tells us that he, he sat on an ash heap with a, with a broken piece of pottery and scraped the sores just he just he was in such misery and such pain and then he had three fellows who claimed to be his friends that would come around and and accuse him of all kinds of stuff and tell him that he had sinned and he had disappointed God and he had done this and he had done that and he had to have if he hadn't have done it why he wouldn't be in the situation he's in and and all of this stuff and in the midst of all of that Job answers one of his friends so-called friends and it's almost as if Job just says, wait a minute, time out. You're telling me all of this junk. I don't believe it. But this is what he does, says, oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Now, a book may get lost. A book may get uh, damaged and destroyed. So he goes on to say this, that with an iron stylus and lead, they were engraved in the rock forever and this is what he had to say that he wanted inscribed in a on a rock with an iron stylus he says this as for me i know i know that my redeemer lives i know that my redeemer lives and at the last he will take his stand on the earth job was filled with that assurance and with that confidence of some things and that's what i'm going to think about first tonight is the confidence that Job had, the confidence of Job. He says, I know. He didn't say, I hope so, or I think so, or maybe so. No, he said, this I do know. I know that my Redeemer lives. And I hope today that there's some things that you know in your heart of heart. Down deep, it's gone past your head. It's gone down into the very core and fiber of your soul that you know who your Redeemer is, and you know that you have a Redeemer, and you know that your Redeemer lives today. To be able to say, I know, has a way of dispelling all the darkness and all the gloom and all of the doubt that we may be facing. You know, doubt has a way of stinging the soul and robbing us of our joy. But Jesus Christ, if we know who Jesus is, He has a way of taking our sorrows and turning them to joy. He has a way of taking our ashes and turning them to beauty. He has a way of taking our chaos and turning them into peace. That's the way Jesus works. And oh, what confidence Job has, what confidence that you and I can have tonight to know who Jesus is. 
if Job had that kind of confidence in who God was, what's our excuse? Shouldn't we have the same kind of confidence? I know who my Redeemer is, and I know that He lives. I know that I know that I know. And we can confidently say that I know who Jesus is. I know who Jesus is. We next find Job's comfort. Job's comfort. Job, Job says this, I know my Redeemer. He got a lot of comfort by the personal knowledge of who Jesus was. Now it's nice to know that a loved one knows Jesus. It's nice to know a friend that knows Jesus. But it's more important that you know Jesus, that I know Jesus, that we have a personal knowledge of who He is. They, it's, history reveals to us, it's been now, uh, it's been nearly 175 years ago now, a fellow by the name of James Marshall was out in the hills of California and made a discovery that changed his life and changed really changed the life of this nation forever. He discovered gold. And after that discovery, the news filtered back east and and uh, boy, people began to sell everything they had. They loaded up on a, on a wagon and drawn by horses and headed for California. And uh, they wanted to strike it rich because they heard about all the gold, all the gold in California. They were headed out there to find it. Uh, but you know, I've understood, I've heard, I've, people have told me here in North Carolina that there is actually more gold in North Carolina than there is in the state of California. The problem of it is that gold, the cost to extract that gold from the depths that it's in, it would cost way more than the gold would be worth once you got it to the surface. And so consequently, it just stays there and we talk about it. We talk about the value and the worth of all of that gold. And you know, there's hundreds of thousands. In fact, is a few million people who live in North Carolina. But of all of the people that live in North Carolina, there's thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of them, who live well beneath the poverty level. They don't have two copper pennies to rub together in their pocket. They don't have much of this world's goods at all. It, but yet they live in North Carolina. You see, that gold, all that gold in North Carolina doesn't do us any good if it's not in our pockets, if it's not in our bank account, so that we can buy the necessities of life. And the same is true with Jesus. We can know that somebody else knows Him, but He doesn't do us any good if we don't know Him personally. We can know and we can have that comfort tonight that Jesus is my Redeemer. And if we know that tonight, even if your grip may be weak, and even though your faith may be the, as small as a grain of mustard seed, you can have that comfort, that comfort and that encouragement, that, that confidence, knowing my, I know that my Redeemer lives. The last thing I want us to think about tonight in this little study is, that, is Job's hope. I see Job has lots of hope. Now, the circumstances didn't look very hopeful. Job's children were all deceased. His wife was telling him to curse God and die. His health was broken. His friends were accusing him of things he knew he hadn't done. Everything that he had was gone. And yet Job had hope. How do I know that? Because I know what Job says. I read it there to you today. Job says, this I know, my Redeemer lives. You, we've just come through the Easter season, and you've probably sung the song, or at least you heard the song sung. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds a future, and life is worth the living just because He lives. And life is worth the living today because He lives. In the midst of all of the chaos, in the midst of all the uncertainty, in, in the midst of all of the confusion in our world today, we know and we have hope because He lives. Another songwriter put it like this, You ask me how I know He lives, how do you know that He lives? 
because he lives within my heart. You know, with all the uncertainty, all the fear, all the confusion in our world right now, many of us are staying inside uh, for a place of refuge from this virus. And we're taking refuge uh, in our safety places where it's uh, away from the public and all alone. And if somebody brings us something, something, we haven't set it at the front door and ring the doorbell and then leave and then we go out and get it. But I can tell you tonight, and I'm concerned that we're taking refuge in the Lord in our hearts and in our minds. Are we taking refuge in the Lord? Have we come to Him and escaped into our secret closet of prayer? It might, it might be that you need to just take a moment, get your Bible down and dust it off and open it up. And you might have to look in the glossary to figure out which book belongs where and front to back. But, but get God's Word down and begin to read through the book of Psalms and see if you can't find a word of encouragement. See if you can't find somewhere along the way God's Word to lift your spirits and encourage you. Begin to count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. It will surprise you when you begin to count your blessings. And I encourage you to do it. It might be that you just need to turn on some good gospel music. You know, you, you hear all kinds of other junk on the radio and a lot of other stuff, and a lot of it's good stuff. But let's, let's, take a, let's just set aside 30 minutes, just 30 minutes, and turn on the, the good gospel music station and listen to some uplifting, encouraging music, stuff that'll make you feel better, stuff that'll just resonate in your soul and wash away all of the, the confusion and all of the dissension in our world today. Maybe you need to get out and take a walk. Maybe you need to just to get out like I am this afternoon, enjoy the, the sunshine and the green grass and the green trees and the blue sky. Maybe you need just to get out alone with God and just begin to talk to Him and take your burden, your concerns to Him. Whatever you do, take some time to rest in the Lord. Take confidence in what you know, not in how you feel or in what you hear, but take confidence in what you know. Take comfort in the fact that Jesus is your Redeemer. And because of those two facts today, there is hope for tomorrow because He lives. Let Him refresh your soul, lift your spirits, and encourage you today as you remember the words of Job, This I know, that my Redeemer lives. And at the last day, he will take his stand on earth. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, we thank you for this time we've had together today to look at your word for the encouragement and the blessings of your word. I pray, Father, that it will speak to us, not just tonight, but as we go forward. Would you lift? Would you bless? Would you draw us closer into your presence? Father, we love you today. We ask your blessings upon your people. Guide us throughout the rest of this week. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy. And Father, we pray that we would be filled with hope knowing that one of these days you're going to come together, come to earth to get us and to take us home to be with you. Guide us throughout the rest of this week and make us a blessing. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen.